When I was 16 years old and first came into investing, I had no idea how any of it worked. And I'm no Warren Buffett now, but today we're gonna learn exactly how. I've always wondered how do prices in the stock market change? I mean, I get why they change. People are buying and selling stocks all the time, so it makes sense, but who or what is responsible for the prices changing? Is it a group of people on the stock exchange? Is it the Illuminati or an automated computer system? And if it is an automated computer system, then how does it know what to change the price to? These are all basic investment questions that very few people actually know the answers to. But if you stick around, you're gonna have the answers to all of them. So with all that being said, let's get right into it. Now this is pretty crazy, but not too long ago, just before the tech boom, we had a silly little thing called floor trading. This is essentially when instead of investing from the comfort of your own home on your laptop, investors would have to go into an actual physical stock exchange, like the New York Stock Exchange, which is located in New York City on 11 Wall Street, where they would invest with a pretty funny method looking back at it today called open outcry. They would quite literally yell at each other. Someone would scream, I want 100 shares of Coca-Cola at $50 a share. And someone would respond, sold 100 shares of Coca-Cola at $50 a share. And they would write down everything meticulously and manually into their ledgers, and at the end of the day, they would come together and settle all the transactions. And if you and I, a retail investor, wanted to get in on the action, we would call up our favorite broker and be like, hey, Jerry, I want stock X at price Y. And they would try to match up our order with anyone on the floor who's buying or selling what we're looking for. And this is how it worked for quite a long time. Now, if you can only imagine a room of angry investors yelling back and forth, this led to a phenomenon known as market noise. This is basically if you're yelling loud enough, you could influence others to yell the same things that you're yelling and therefore cause an influx of buy or sell pressure on a particular security. There's this really cool cartoon that was drawn by The Economist, which illustrates this beautifully. It's essentially a big game of broken telephone in real time and people were making investments just based on rumors they heard. But anyways, now that we understand this, what impacts the price of a stock now that things are all digital? Now for all my stock nerds, furiously typing in the comments, it's all P ratios and technical analysis and news narratives. No, I'm talking about the specific number that we see in the brokerage when we're checking the price of a stock. How does it go up and down and who controls that? Believe it or not, there is no secret Krabby Patty formula. <laughs> The price you see in the brokerage is essentially just the last price the stock was traded at. Isn't that crazy? It's not Megamind himself telepathically controlling the price, it's essentially just what people are willing to pay for. So the price you see on your brokerage, which is quite literally changing every second, is nothing more than the last price it was bought or sold at. And before the stock guys come after me, I do recognize that there are tons of factors which may come into play when you look at the changing of prices of stocks. But once you boil down all the noise, the fundamental rule breaks down to the basic supply and demand principle. If more people want to buy than sell, then the price goes up and vice versa. And this is exactly what happened to Bitcoin not too long ago. Now, if you've gone this far into the video, then good job, you're really smart. But let's crank it up just a little bit. There's this thing called ELOB, which stands for Electronic Limit Order Book. Now, exchanges usually do this behind the scenes by leveraging different databases, but it's important that you at least understand this so that you don't end up overpaying for a stock. I want you to imagine a column of buy offers on one side and a column of sell offers on the other side. The buy offers are sorted from greatest to least, and the sell orders are the opposite, with the lowest dollar amount at the top and the highest dollar amount at the bottom. On the buy side, offers are sorted from the greatest at the top to the least at the bottom, and on the sell side, it's the exact opposite, with the lowest at the top and the greatest at the bottom. So this is what is known as bid and ask. Buy is bid, so BB and A is sell, so now we have BB and we have ask. <laughs> now for a trade to occur, the bid price must meet the ask price, but there can't be an unlimited amount of trades at that price. So as soon as a trade settles, the next highest bid and the next lowest ask get pushed to the surface. And this is what we see when we update the apps on our end. Now, if you've been able to stay this far with me, you're doing great, but we're gonna bring it up one more notch now. So get ready. The last piece of this puzzle comes into play when we look at market and limit orders, which may sound super complicated, but trust me, it's not. Listen to this. So depending on the type of order you place, the price of the stock you're buying can change. So a market order will buy or fill all the shares that it can at the lowest price that it finds, but you don't have any control over what that price will be. So let me show you what I mean. Let's say that we have three cards here or three of the same stock. Now on your end, the brokerage may reflect the price per share to be $100. But that's quite deceiving because what they don't tell you is that only the first share is worth $100. The second share is costed at $110 and the third share at $115. 
Now, if you were to jump right into a market order, Elon would go into the ask column and scan it for the lowest price entry point at that moment. So in that case, it would settle the first stock at $100, the second at $110, and the third at $115. So on the surface, it may seem like you're paying $300 for those three shares, but in reality, you had to pay $335. A limit order, on the other hand, is completely different. When you enter into a limit order, you're essentially telling the brokerage that you are willing to pay $100 and absolutely not a penny more for that particular stock. So in that case, if ELOP doesn't see a suitable entry point, it will not execute the trade and you'll wait until a suitable entry point becomes available. And that's why in some cases, a market order can be a little bit problematic because in some cases, your average cost might be a little bit higher than what you expected. Now keep in mind that most of the time, the difference here will be negligible, so not a huge deal, but something to consider. So I know that was a lot, but if you've made it this far, I hope you've made a very interesting realization. The reason why the prices of stocks move is because of you all of you at home watching. Retail investors and institutional investors come together to make the difference. Now feel free to watch this video over as many times as you need because it's definitely a lot to digest, especially if you're just getting into investing. With all that being said, I wish you all the best of luck in your investment journeys. Click right here if you want to learn more. Don't forget to leave a like and as always, I'll see you guys next time.